everyone. Welcome to our first installment of Fine Art Friday. This fall, we'll be talking about four different types of art, artists that created famous pieces in each type, and then we'll learn how to create masterpieces of our own in similar styles. This month, we'll be talking about Impressionism, an art movement that gained popularity in France near the end of the 1800s. So what is Impressionism, and why is it such an important art movement? Up until the late 1800s, realism art was used to show dramatic scenes, historic scenes, or represent high-class life and families. In the mid-1800s, artists started bending the rules of art and portraying different scenes in their art, such as everyday life for middle-class people. While there's no official start date for Impressionism art, many people define it as when art moved outdoors. This was a new thing for artists, because up until this point, paint was mixed and made as the artist painted. It required a lot of table and mixing space and different tools. Then, revolutionary paint in tubes was created. This was still oil paint that took a while to dry, but the artist could put together a small box of colors and brushes, grab a canvas, and move outside. Impressionist painters painted real-life outdoor scenes with or without people in them. Impressionist artists liked to focus on outdoor scenes so that they could show how sunlight changed natural colors and how there were so many colors in every place they looked. Instead of focusing on the exact subject of their painting, they focused on the feeling or sensation of their painting, the impression of their painting, you could say. Because Impressionist artists weren't interested in painting exactly what they were looking at, they used more vivid and contrasting colors and lighter brush strokes to create their pieces. Check out this piece by Claude Monet, one of the first documented artists to work in the Impressionism style. This piece is called Impression Sunrise. At first glance, we might only see shades of blue and green mixed together with a bright orange focal point. A focal point is what we see first in art. But if we look closer, we can start to make out what looks like little rowboats traveling closer from large ships. What stood out to Monet as he painted this scene was the contrast between the boats, water, and how the orange sunset contrasted beautifully with the blue water. Contrasting colors are colors that are opposite on the color wheel. For example, blue and orange. To show the movement of water, Monet used short brush strokes with different colors of greens and blues. To make the sunset stand out, he used bright orange and yellow lines in the sky and on top of the water. When Claude Monet first showed this piece at an art gallery, critics didn't like it. They claimed they couldn't tell what the picture was of and that it didn't have a purpose. What do you think? Should you always be able to tell exactly what the subject of art is? Or is the feeling of a scene enough? Let's check out another Impressionist artist, Pierre Gus Renoir. Renoir was also one of the first artists to exhibit art in an Impressionism style. He even had gallery shows with Claude Monet. This piece is called La Guerriere and shows how Renoir worked hard to capture natural light through the colors in his paintings. See how the light comes in from behind the trees and reflects off the water? He achieved this look by using short brush strokes and bold colors. Another characteristic of Renoir's Impressionist paintings are the people he features in them. Renoir uses contrasting colors, again, to make each person stand out individually. But if you look closer, they aren't perfect paintings of people. They are just impressions, put there to help you judge the mood or vibe of the painting. Check out this other piece by Renoir, Dance the Moulin du Galette. This is Renoir's best known piece of art for multiple reasons. First, the people in his painting are average, middle-class people, not rich and royal families. The Moulin de la Galette was a place for working people to gather to enjoy each other's company, eat fresh food, dance, and have fun. It's amazing that Renoir was able to take his art outside and capture this lively event. He couldn't take a picture and copy it afterwards, and these people didn't stand still while he painted. He just painted the things he saw and how he felt while he was at the friendly gathering. Second, look at how detailed Renoir was able to make the light in the painting. If you sit outside under a tree, you'll notice how the sunlight comes in through little patches and twinkles around. One of the coolest things about this painting is that Renoir was able to replicate that kind of light. That requires lots of color mixing and planning ahead for a natural look. And oh boy, does Renoir do it well. Let's look at one more Impressionist artist, Camille Pissarro. Pissarro worked at the same time as Monet and Renoir and helped to pave the way for the Impressionism art movement. His art also shows great examples of how Impressionism art showed how bold outdoor colors were and how sunlight made everything look different. Look at this piece by Pissarro, Entrée du village de Bourgogne. 
Check out how bright everything is and how dark the shadows coming in from the trees are. If we give this painting a little bit of thought, we can guess that it was painted around sunrise or sunset at a time when everything is bright, but there are also long dark shadows. In contrast to the shadows, let's take a look at the tops of the trees. They are bright in light colors. Because the sunlight hits them directly, they are the lightest and brightest places in the scene. So far, all of the Impressionist art we've looked at has involved the sun or bright days. For our last piece, I want to take a look at Camille Pissarro's painting, The Banks of Watts. We can tell this is still an Impressionism era piece of art because it is based outside and uses light brush strokes to show movement. But this piece doesn't have any bright sun in it. Instead, Pissarro painted a cloudy day. We can only see traces of sunlight on the light sides of the clouds where the sun is trying to peek through. All the other colors on the scene look muted too, because they don't have the sunlight either. The grass is a dull green, and the water doesn't seem to shine like we've seen in past paintings. The gravel road that the people are traveling has traces of blue and gray in it, almost like it just got done raining. Or maybe it's about to storm. Look at the trees in the background. It looks like the wind is blowing them pretty hard, it's so neat that even though there weren't colored pictures or cameras that worked fast enough to capture this kind of scene back then, artists were still able to paint them and we can remember them beautifully. Okay, today we learned about three artists, Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Camille Pissarro, and how their art contributed to the creation of the Impressionism art movement. We saw five different pieces of art and how these artists captured light and outdoor scenes. With that, it is time for us to create our own masterpieces. The first thing you want to do is find your scene and get your canvas out of your art box. If you didn't get an art box, you can also do this project on paper. I like to start out with sketching the scene I plan on painting. Try to choose a spot with lots of light or different colors in it. I chose this location at the back of the library because I love how the sun comes in from behind the buildings and makes the trees look so green. After you sketch out what you want to paint, it's time to dig into your art box. Your box comes with nine colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, black, and white a paintbrush, a cup for water for cleaning your brush, some paper towels, and a color wheel. If you didn't get an art box, you can also use materials from home for this project too. Markers, crayons, or oil pastels if you have them all work great for making impressionism style art. When I start my painting, I like to do my background colors first so that my details will stand out on top of them. Oops, my camera started slipping a little bit while I was painting and I didn't notice. Don't worry, I'll fix it here in a minute. To make different shades of colors, I am using the top of my art box as a mixing palette. If you want to make a color lighter, add a little bit of white to it. If you want to make a color darker, try adding a little black to it. Have fun mixing your colors and making new ones to add variety to your painting. If the weather is bad or you would rather paint inside, that's all right. Unlike Impressionist artists back in the 1800s, we have cameras and ways to find pictures online. Go ahead and find a picture or take a picture of your own of an outdoors location to paint. So here I'm still adding in my background colors. Can you see the buildings, the sky, and the brick patio starting to stand out? Remember, Impressionism isn't a perfect replica of the scene you are painting. You just want to get the feeling of your scene down. I love how many bright and natural colors are in this scene.
After painting, make sure you are washing and drying off your paintbrush so your colors don't get too messy and mixed up. Yay, it's time to add our details. If you are including trees in your painting, I like to draw the trunks of my trees first and then add globs of paint for the leaves. I think this makes trees look more realistic. After I get my base colors on, I like to go back and add in my shadows. Look at the scene you are painting and see where your shadows are. Usually they'll be at the bottom of the leaves on the tree, and if you have a building in your scene, there will be square shadows from that. Remember that impressionist artists like to use long or lots of short brush strokes to show movement. If you're using markers or crayons, try pressing down hard and then lightly to alternate how the colors look on your work in progress. Check out the shadow my big tree casts on the building it's in front of. To make these shadows in my painting, I use darker shades of my base colors. Remember, to make a darker shade of a color, add a little bit of black. After you've made your shadows, you can go back in and add highlights, or spots where the sun is making your scene really bright. Remember how the tops of the trees in Camille Passero's The Banks of Bois piece were really bright? So are ours! To make highlights, I add white to my original color. For my leaves, I am just dabbing this lighter color on top of my original color. It's time to add shadows to the brick patio. I loved how the red bricks stood out against the green bushes and trees. Remember how impressionist artists like to use contrasting or complementary colors to stand out? If you take a look at your color wheel, you'll see that red and green are complementary colors. I made my red bricks extra red so that they would stand out more.
go back and add in all the little shadows I missed too. Make sure you take time to look at what you are painting and see all that you can see. Painting isn't just painting. Take some time to really take in the environment that you are sitting in before you start your project. One of my favorite parts of painting is going in at the end and adding in all the little details. Now I'm adding in other plants I see. If you want to add animals into your painting, this would be the perfect time to do it. My last detail I added was our picnic table. It doesn't look perfect, but that's okay. What I love about Impressionism is that each artist gets to paint what they want from a scene. Because Impressionist artists painted outside, things were constantly changing. Throughout this painting, my shadows moved, leaves blew around, and people walked by. Choose your favorite parts of your scene and add those to your painting. Here's my finished piece. I am so happy with how it turned out. I love my contrasting reds and greens and how the shadows from the trees make the patio look. When you are finished with your piece, let your art sit and dry and then find an area to display it. I'm so excited to see what you guys create for your own impressionism pieces of art. Take a picture and post it in the comments or show me a picture of the library next time you're in. I'm really excited to see what you guys create. See you all next month.